I am ready to mill the exhaust manifold on the milling machine. I'm going to use my homemade adjustable fly cutter. I set a dial indicator and I made sure the table is square to the cutter. I also check the table. It stays zero the whole length. So when I mill the manifold, it will be perfectly flat. I'm going to set the manifold and then I show you the setup I use to set it on this table. I didn't record setting the manifold on the mill table because it took long time. I done this in the past and on this one it took about two and a half hours. I didn't want to record it and the camera be in the way and then I have to speed up the video and you won't benefit from the information that I will provide you in this two minute uh, talk on how I set it. You need to make sure when you tie the manifold to the table you don't put any torque on it because it will flex and then when you machine it and remove it from the mill then it's gonna go back and it will have little bit of twist to it the way I do it I set it by a snug it on the outside uh, ports and I shoot for zero reading on one of them to get zero on both ends and this is what I ch achieve over here then I move the table this way and I set it to zero on one end the other end is negative five and I left it snug and then I mapped all these ports which one is positive which one is negative and by how much and I wrote this information on the manifold itself then I set the dial indicator in the middle and I tie this until I achieve this number I wrote here with the dial indicator. Then I did the other side and so on. So when I finish after I tied everything and this is very strong right now, it doesn't move. I still have the same reading on all these ports. So once I finish milling it, when I remove it, it's going to maintain the same flatness. The other thing my milling machine is small for this job. This table move in this direction 19 inches. This exhaust manifold, it measure 25 from outside to outside, 25 and a half inches or 25 and 3 8, something like that. I'm going to use my homemade fly cutter and I extended it in a way when I move the table in both direction it will reach the outside port and now I'm ready to start I'm going to touch the cutter to the highest spot and zero out the dial and I also have the DRO I'll set it to zero and then uh, I'll start taking light cuts until I cut all of them and it will be flat The insert I have on this fly cutter, it's good for cast iron. It has little bit negative rake, so the finish should be good. I also removed the handle from the mill because they will hit the manifold. 
and everything taut and I have this bolt they tie to the table and I use them as jack bolts and they, uh, the manifold is resting on them so the fly cutter will not put any downforce or if it did this will not move down This over there is the highest spot. I like the quill. I zero the DRO. I'm removing now three thousands. Bye. Uh -huh. 
it is perfect now I'm ready to remove it a few tips always like the quill every time you adjust the fly cutter and I also like the table in this dimension it's only moved this way and I put some tension on the gibbs so it's very tight and I'm running at 240 rpm for this fly cutter this is a carbide insert it designed for cast iron and hard steel and this is a homemade fly cutter and I made it adjustable and I was able to outreach to these ports 